I took my Oh, So we have that tied into that. Excellent. There we go. Perfect. Got just like three more minutes, we'll get the show on the road. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I did sectionals for middle school on Tuesday. And so Thursday, I woke up with the first girl. Oh, my God. Yeah. Any place where there's something on that about that? Excellent. Yeah. 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 Y
I don't have connections. Yeah. 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 I think Ace is the best person they've That's all one vote like that. This has as I did not. I got the hundred and fifty dollars discount. Okay. You know, I think most of the time, I think it's was it your shop? And you were in time. Okay. Um, who am I worried about? I was actually a little later than I was. I was like, I don't know. 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 I don't Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. Well, the second day of travel week. How many were here yesterday? Great. The program. How many are, are going to be here tomorrow? Okay. How many have been to Iceland already? How many have traveled with Go Ahead Tours with Ali or on your own? Great. Give you an idea. Well, I'm so glad to see all of you. And Travel Week has been put together to give you an idea of what Ali Group Travel is all about. So this week is full of presentations, previews from our travel providers, overview classes. With the travel expert, how many have gone to the overview classes? Overview mm -hmm. classes. We'll talk about the region, the economics, the geography, the cultural aspects of those areas that we'll be holding next year. So if you haven't registered for any of those, we still have plenty of those classes yet throughout the week. We also have packing classes, travel app <laughs> classes, language classes, you name it, next door in our classroom throughout the week. So in your packets, so everybody should have been, received a packet on the way in. It has the rest of the schedule for this week coming in, as well as a hot cold pack that Heather put together for you. So we hope that you can find that for you. What is it called? The chill pack, Heather? Is that right? It's boo boo pack. Oh, the boo boo pack. That's right. <laughs> okay. Any questions about travel week? No questions. All right. So you will be getting an evaluation at the end of this week to get an idea of what you experienced, what works for you, what didn't work for you, and what we might look at doing differently in the future or adding on to it. So please fill those out. Today you're here this morning. Our first session is on Iceland. We'll be traveling next July with Go Ahead Tours. Um, it is an 11-day trip, nine nights in the handpicked hotel. We'll be taking 25, and I believe there's four singles available. I already did this trip in 2018. Did anybody go on that one? 
both Carol and I did. It was a fabulous trip going through. Amazing. So good that when we saw, when we did the survey, we saw that people wanted to go, our members wanted to go back to ice and look at it. Oh, most definitely. And we'll keep the same itinerary because it was so successful. So this morning, Josh Karachi from EF Go Ahead Tours is going to share with you his knowledge and expertise and experience in Iceland. So it's all yours. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, and thank you, Kelly. Um, I appreciate it. And fun fact, not only, I know most, or I guess some people have been joke, coming to mid-Michigan in the middle of February is an awesome time, and I completely agree. I'm from Michigan. I actually went to school not that far away uh, up at MSU, but I've got some family who are second on Valley State alumni, so they'll, they'll happen to be back. Um, but as Shelly mentioned, I have some personal experience with Iceland. I was just there this past October. And even though that's not long, that's not that long ago, I promise I will push your every pronunciation of these beautiful places as we go over the go over the itinerary today. But that's I come by it honestly. Um, but as I mentioned before, I represent EF Go Ahead Tours. Um, I actually live in Denver now, uh, but we are we have been partnered with the Alley here at Saginaw Valley for for multiple years pre-COVID, and just happy to see that everyone is back filling these seats again because um, you know it's the we, we had way too much time stuck at home, and now I'm happy to see people are ready to get back out and see the world again. So a quick breakdown of what we're going to talk about in today's meeting. And if you're joining any of the other meetings with me today, I'm going back to back to back to back. So I'd love to see you in all four if you want to join. Um, but we are going to talk about itinerary for the tour, some highlights, um, pricing, and of course, how you are able to sign up if you are interested in joining. And it's earmarked on your schedule for an hour long. The presentation won't take a full hour, but it's designed to have plenty of time for you to ask me questions at the end, because um, I think that's usually the best way to get the information you need. So as Shelly mentioned before, we are going in July of 2025. Um, a beautiful time to be there. I think when you think about Iceland, there's kind of two different target times people go. You can go in the winter when it's quite cold, trying to chase the lights, or you can go in the summer much more comfortable. Um, not as high of a chance to see the lights, but it's still, you're not missing out. You're still going to see many amazing things. And actually, it's from when I was there in October, it is more popular to go in the summer. So you will be, uh, you will be good company. As we mentioned before, nine nights in handpicked hotels. Standard with go ahead is always four star and above. People, people going to Europe, especially if it's your first time, people are like, well, what's going on with these hotels? No, these are high quality hotels. They are above being comfortable. They are very nice. Um, you get breakfast every day, two lunches, four dinners with beer or wine if you choose. If you don't want to drink, of course, you don't have to. Um, one liquor tasting, three food tastings. That's the fun fact about Iceland. I went in there with this was my expectation of what I thought the food was going to be. It's an island. You have to import everything. It was way better than expected. Um, they have a massive native sheep population. So if you like lamb, you are in good shape. Um, and the one that I thought was really random is that they have their own, it's made of lamb, but they are, Iceland is known for their hot dogs, which you wouldn't think is like a big thing. But I ate my weight in hot dogs and I would go back and run down. Uh, 16 sightseeing tours. Uh, I would argue, and I've had a fortune to be a lot of amazing places in my life. I've been to Europe, Latin America, South America, Southeast Asia. I've yet to go to Africa yet or Antarctica, um, but go ahead, does go there. So future thoughts, yeah. Kelly. Um, but this is one of the most unique places I've ever been. You will see mountains that literally terminate into the ocean. I live in Colorado. I have a lot of beautiful mountains that I can see. I've never seen one go directly into a water before, and you will see that on this tour, um, which I think is very, very unique. Uh, and of course, expert tour directors and local guides. I think keeping the best tour directors in the industry is like what separates Go Ahead. If you've been on a Go Ahead tour before, there's a reason a lot of times we request the same folks over and over again, and it's because we prioritize making sure you all have true experts. So I did, I'd love to be a tour director for you all. I'm not Icelandic. I don't have the expertise. We prioritize making sure the people who are going to be with you the whole step of the tour are true experts. Um, and not just some guy who went there with his wife's family. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to have your own private deluxe motor coach. Uh, these are those big, comfortable buses. These are not school buses. And also, the tour is not going to, we never sell 
the same amount of spots on the bus because I used to be a school teacher. And if you've ever been on a bus, and I, I view it as feeling like you're a sardine in a can, you can all rest assured if you sign up for any of our tours, that is not the experience we're going to provide for you for very specific <clears> reasons. <throat> so we're kind of breaking it down. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is one of the few words I will pronounce mostly correct. Uh, Reykjavik. Uh, I think of like a rake. That was my way of remembering it. But it is the largest city in Iceland. It's outside. It's not actually where the airport is, but it is pretty close. Um, see the picture there in the lower right hand side. Many of us have heard of the Blue Lagoon. Um, it is going to be an optional excursion on day two. But uh, I don't want to jump ahead of it too much. Thinking about day one. Day one is always your travel day. Um, if you have traveled before, you get, like Josh, I already know this, but if we have some new folks in here, I don't want to, I don't want to brush past it. So you've got a great situation here with the alley because uh, transportation is going to be coordinated to get from the school down to Detroit. We fly overnight uh, and then we arrive in the morning on day two. We all know everybody adjusts to changing time zones differently. So if you ever look at a day two of any of our tours, they are never going to be action packed for that very reason. You don't, I'll tell you, I've been on trips before, personal trips where as soon as we hit the ground, we were running, you can be off by a couple of days if you do that. So we do not want that to be the case for anybody. So on day two, um, you get there, you get taken, tour directors picking you up from the airport, taking you directly to the hotel to get settled little bit of downtime some people are energized so it's not like you can't go spend your afternoon kind of walk around checking out some things um also thinking about our hotels they're centrally located we're not i often compare my experience when i used to work with students versus working with adults students there was a motivator to kind of have their hotels away from the action because you know <laughs> if you're going to paris you don't want a bunch of high school kids in the middle of middle of downtown uh, tempted to explore. But if you're an adult, it's really nice to be able to say, yeah, we have a hotel where I can walk and I, I don't have to worry about getting a taxi in a, in a country that I have never been to before. Um, so point being is that day two, you're going to have the ability to acclimate and then you have a really awesome welcome dinner. That's always going to be part of any go ahead tour where even though know, folks here might know each other to some capacity, it's the sense of community that comes from a trip like this, I think is another big motivator why folks, you see them come back time after time again. Uh, and that's what that day two welcome dinner is designed to be. Um, and then what was I gonna say? There are, like I said, just a couple of like small, like smaller, easier things to do um, as like you have your welcome or day two welcome experience in, in a regular thing. So, you're going to notice a transition here. It went from, I was in a city, I got to do some exploring, and now we are really, I think, why people go to Iceland. You get right outside of the city, and it is, you know, like people say that they go to Kauai in Hawaii, and they say it's the Jurassic Park Island. This is like Jurassic Park meets Glacier meets, I don't know, again, you're on a different planet, it feels like sometimes, but in the best way possible. Um, and one thing you will see, some people ask, do you get sick of the waterfalls? You don't. Um, <laughs> and this is just one of the, uh, cell Foss is the first just outside of Reykjavik. Um, you'll see that turn black golden circle as it is, you are making a uh, counterclockwise rotation starting from the Southern coast, making your way up to the North and then wrapping your way back around again. Um, like I said, day three, we're here, we're acclimated, we've seen the city, now we're going into, into more of the country. Um, and as I, said, as I mentioned before, you're gonna see a lot of these beautiful waterfalls and again, they do not get old. Um, other things you're gonna see, one thing that I really liked is down here, the Great Geyser, you will be able to get from me to that, even closer to the, the windows back there in the back of the auditorium, that is how close it'll be, it's kind of like everyone's ever, anyone's ever been to Yosemite um, or, or Yellowstone, I apologize, where you can kind of get that close. But these geysers are going off every, I mean, they're not time, it's nature, but you're saying like every couple minutes they are going off. And some of them were three school buses high. Um, and it is, it is very interesting and cool, uh, really cool experience. As you continue the southern coast, uh, we're going into day four now. Um, we are going to, guess what, see more waterfalls. 
Um, the one you see up here in the upper left-hand corner, which as I say, I will not be attempting to pronounce these, is definitely the most famous one. That one, you can't really tell from the angle, but you're actually able to walk, if you so choose to, fully around it. So imagine the waterfall being in the center, or like where the projector is, you can stand right here, and then you can see the backside of the waterfall while people are on it, which I think is a very, very unique thing, because most waterfalls are, yeah. I stand on this side, waterfalls over there, we take some beautiful pictures, and we kind of stand in between it, where the waterfalls here, just because you can kind of see there, it is literally almost like coming over the side of a cliff, um, but it is a really, really fun experience. Mm -hmm. If you are really adventurous, that path you see there on the left-hand side, you can take it, I don't know, an eighth of a mile down, and there is actually another waterfall cave that you kind of have to wait for people to sneak your way into. That is optional, of course, if you're not willing to go navigate the slippery rocks, you do not have to. Um, another thing that you're gonna be able to see here, because the thing about Iceland, I think most folks know the story with the Vikings about how they switch the names around. Mm -hmm. Iceland is really green, Greenland is really ice. Uh, but there's plenty of real ice there because Iceland has multiple glaciers that sit upon it. Um, and that's why you can see another thing on day four is, excuse me, uh, you'll be able to be visiting uh, glaciers. This is where I talked about things that don't make sense. You'll have glacier and a black sand beach right next to each other. Um, and that is just a, I don't, I'm going to keep exploring, but I don't know many places in the world you're going to be able to go where you can have those two things happen simultaneously. Uh, also, uh, this one, there'll be free time built in in Vic for lunch, um, where you'll be able to see some additional lava fields uh, and a national park. And then uh, this is actually one of the days that does include dinner. So when thinking about budgeting, of course, we do have multiple dinners included besides your welcome and farewell dinner. But the reason we don't have dinner every night is because thinking about, you know, if the trip were to fill up, it's a challenge getting 30 people to one restaurant. And other thing about an island nation is we do not have large restaurants, so sometimes we have to split things up. Um, and also the other thing is, it might be a long day for you. You might not necessarily want to go and have a full night with people. You want to take a little time to go relax and recuperate so you can get ready for the next day, which is why you look at any go ahead tour and you're really never going to have an all every meal built in. And it's, it's designed to get to continue to give folks balance. So as we continue down the, the South coast, because I mentioned before on day four, we were in Vic, Vic is kind of on the Southern tip of the Island. And then as we start to make our way around, this is really interesting here. These, this, if you want to call it like a floating ice chunks here, you see how blue it is. One thing I learned when I was in Iceland, which I was not aware of, was like, why was the ice so blue? Isn't ice supposed to be clear? And it's actually a sign that like when it's frozen and it's true ice, the clear is oxygen. So when you actually have real water that is completely frozen, that's where you get those dark, dark blue colors. Um, and you will see those because those are part of the glacier that is chunking off, which is Again, a very, to me, a very, very interesting thing to see. Um, and part of it is like, if you see the second dot down, you'll be able to cruise through the lagoon. So while you might not necessarily be able to touch it, I mean, when you're doing those lagoon cruises, like you are right up next to it, occasionally you're, there might be a, a seal that will come find his or her way onto one of those ice chunks, which is, makes for a fun photo op. Um, but yeah, I think those, the, float, the floating icebergs are another really, fun takeaway for me. Uh, and then uh, again, a visit to the National Park uh, where there is an optional glacier hike excursion. I recommend it. I thought it was another thing. I don't know if anybody here, raise your hand if you're a fan of Game of Thrones at all, if anybody watched the show. You will be amazed from your tour guides how many things in, how many major scenes from that show were filmed in Iceland. Um, and what was I going to say? I thought about that when I did my glacier hike because I felt like I was going beyond the wall. Like I felt like we were, yeah. Um, but that, yeah, that was my, I was there with my wife's family and they were all big Game of Thrones fans. Um, and we even saw when we did our hike on the way back, it was not frozen yet, but the scene where they do the epic battle and the dragon goes under the ice and the Night King, and people are like, what is he talking about? I'm not going to that. Um, but there is, there, it was really cool to be able to see that as well.
Um, again, day five also is another one that does uh, end with a, an included dinner. All right, going to the fjord region. And yes, they still call them fjords, even though we're not in Scandinavia. Um, this is going to be, we're starting to make our way around. Um, so at this point, we are, we've done the southern coast, and so we're starting to make our way around the east coast, heading north again. So fun fact, though, another one, Game of Thrones fans, this is the valley where the original dragon flies. That is not the one that, that, that is in there. Um, but you will see, uh, you can see here, we're hanging out on the coast again. Um, these are, because you are going in summer, there's going to be some really cool opportunities to see harbor towns um, at this point in the year. We specifically picked the dates because, you know, Iceland is a very regional place in terms of people go. You'll you'll meet, if you when you meet local Icelandic folks, they will tell you in this part of the year, there's very little sunshine. They are out, they are living in other, potentially other countries, but they're back when you guys will all be there, which will be fun because I think, for me, one of the best joys of going on these tours is the, the ability to engage with locals and really like learn culture firsthand. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's a, it's a, as we continue on, um, I do think these day six will just be to really scenic part of the country. I mean, all of it's scenic, but in terms of like while you're transporting from place to place, that is one of the things. There's a there's don't get us wrong, you're not gonna be stuck in the bus, but this is the only this is one of the only places I've ever been where I had just as much enjoyment looking out the window than I did when you're just kind of sorry, are we at the next place? You're at the next place. You you're kind of okay no matter where you are nicely, which is fun. Um, all right, now going up to the north. That's a curie. I think I said that correct. I was there a couple of times. I think we we got it, but um, we have now made our way from the east coast up to the northern coast. So Curie is actually the second largest city in Iceland. Um, so you are, uh, while you do have, again, amazing scenery along the way, you are going to be in, I'm air quoting here, like a large city, because uh, not, not, no city in Iceland, I think, is more than 300,000 people. Um, but again, uh, more amazing waterfalls. The volcanic landscape changes a little bit. You can see that picture in the upper left-hand corner. Um, these are more, It's there are smaller little parks that we'll be stopping in, um, where again, to me, this is more when I say it looks like a different planet. I've never been to Mars, but I feel like this is a little bit of what I think Mars might look like. Um, but again, the beauty doesn't stop. Uh, and that's where you're talking about those lava fields. Um, and then there is, the underlying, literally and figuratively, narrative of Iceland is the geothermal activity. So if you see in the lower right-hand corner, or the picture in the lower right, that is going to be the nature bath. So these are, you know, we talk about Blue Lagoon when you are when you first land, but I actually prefer the ones that were away from the main city. Um, I think they're a little less explored. They are just as beautiful. Um, some people claim that they have therapeutic powers sitting in there. If that makes you feel better, amazing. I felt great after I left. That's all I can tell you. Um, I'm no scientist, but it, it worked for me. Uh, and then again, what a surprise, one more waterfall before we, end up, before we end the day. Day eight, we stay in a curry. Um, this is, again, we're on the northern coast. Another fun movie, if anybody's ever seen, uh, it's called... The Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, it's the Fire Saga, the uh, Eurovision movie on Netflix, which is Will Ferrell. And it's like it's making it's it's it playing a little bit of fun on the uh, Eurovision Song Contest. It's like I didn't know what it was before I watched it, but it was kind of like imagine America had a different representative from every state competing, and then whoever won, that's what Europe does for singers. Oh, kind of like American yeah. Idol a little bit. Um, but there is the town that they actually base it off of. It's in this geographic area. And it's, uh, again, it's beautiful. And it's actually known for the, I only laugh because in the, the movie, they make fun of the fact that like, oh yeah, they can snap your fingers and like you can get the whales to jump out of the water. But this is very, very well known for whale watching, which is, you do have the ability uh, to do a whale watching excursion. Of course, I go ahead and can't promise that you will see them, um, but we are going at the right time of year where our, where our odds of seeing them are higher. Um, this is also the place I reference where you literally are seeing 
what look like giant mountains ending into the ocean, which is in itself, I don't need to see a whale to say that's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, but if you see a whale on top of it, you know, couldn't be bad. Um, all right, making our way to Hustafel. Uh, so we are now from the north of the island, starting to make our way back west before we before we start turning back or right, get down to Reykjavik. Um, as we make our way west, I think the thing that people really enjoy about this part of the tour is this picture right here, is the fact that we're going to be able to do lava, lava cave tours. Um, and this is a great inverse for when you're not there in the winter, because in the winter, what I did, which is really the basic, I did ice cave tours. But it's kind of like, well, we still want to do something similar, but we're not there when the ice is there, so what can we do? So we do the, we do the lava cave tours. Um, over a thousand years old. I think it's really interesting. I did something similar when I was something in Hawaii. Um, it's, like I said, it's, there's just not many places in the world you can go where you can experience something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was also interesting to learn that they were some of the original inhabitants of the island, lived there and used it for, for shelter when they were coming across. Um, and then, they like said, another included dinner. So, and then the final day, we make our full loop around the island. We are back in Reykjavik. This is the very famous Rainbow Road uh, that is there. Um, and this is really like I said, you think about your farewell dinner. You've just circled the island with new friends. You're going to have two, you're going to need new phones because of all the storage you're going to need from all the photos. Um, you're going to be sitting at a table figuring out how AirDrop works. We're going to get deep, we're going to get the photos to each other. Um, Different friend groups are going to be made via chat. Uh, but point being is, the your last days are really fun time to just sit there and be able to reflect in a good way. You'll be a little tired. You've just had a whole, you've just done the whole ring road of Iceland. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's nice to be back in the, the bigger city. If there's anything you missed for the first time, you have a little bit extra time to go back and explore. Um, this is where I was first turned on to the famous Icelandic hot dogs, and I made sure to get one more before I left. Uh, and then, of course, on day 11, breakfast, transportation back to the airport, and then we all get to come home. Thinking about tips, um, of course, if you've never been on one of our tours before, the folks we mentioned, the tour director, if there's local guides, some portion of those folks' salary do depend on tips. Of course, it's based on service provided. Never provide, never give a tip if you don't feel like someone has earned it. But we do, again, I mentioned, spend a lot of effort to make sure we put the right people in front of uh, our group so we feel like they're going to earn it. Um, but just keep thinking in mind, somewhere between 8 to 11 U.S. dollars per day. Iceland uses a unique uh, currency called the krona. Um, <laughs> But it is one where uh, you'll be able to, most folks will either take tips in US dollars if you have it, or there's plenty of opportunities to convert while you're there. Thinking about pace and walking mobility, yeah, I mentioned before, this is a very unique landscape. You will be, I don't want to set the expectation that everything is flat because it is not. Um, it is not anything where I feel like barring any major physical limitations that anyone shouldn't feel like they can handle it, but I'm just making sure we're setting the correct expectations that, you know, I joke when I talk to folks the first time about a go-ahead tour versus maybe like the guided tours people think of in the past. And like, I had grandparents that went on AAA tours where it was like, hey, we're in a bus and like there's Rome and there's the Coliseum. And I joke, you can take a picture and you can see the reflection of the glass yeah, yeah, yeah. and the picture on the way yeah. back. That's not what this is. So like this, of course, is designed to be interactive. You'll be out of the car, I mean, out of the, out of the bus, you will be there. But even like thinking about the example of the geyser, like there, there's, there's a picture that you're not on flat cement, you're on dirt, there's rocks, there's things like that. So I wanna make sure people are mindful of that. Um, no one will be rushed. Again, it's it's at a it's at a comfortable pace. But at the end of the day, it's important to just do things like make sure you got the right pair of hiking boots on, ankle support. Um, I'm 38. I don't want to. And I've been caught out on my hike all the time. I don't want to tell you how many times I've twisted my ankle and when I thought I was being precautious. So point mm -hmm. is, just be smart about it. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think it's good to know that you know, active around three hours a day, we're going to be out moving around. Um, we don't do any of our days fully packed. Again, back to that concept of balance. Uh, but I do think it's important uh, that folks kind of have that expectation. Uh, 
mentioned before, Iceland uses the krona. Uh, it's another one of those interesting ones where I looked up the conversion rate this morning. It's 137 to every dollar, so there's no really easy math way to remember it. Um, I think about when thinking about money at this point, this day and age, when I travel, it's very, I mean, I get a small amount, I convert a small amount of cash so I have some in my wallet just to be safe. But the majority of every purchase I made when I was in Iceland was done using a credit card. Make sure your credit cards don't have international fees associated with them. The majority of them don't. Um, I think actually the first time I met Shelly was when before your Italy trip, I, I co-hosted the Bon Voyage meeting. So getting everybody ready to, to go to Italy. And just thinking that was a question that came up. Well, how does it work with money? And it, was there any issue in, when, in Italy from your memory, Shelly? Like where everything worked good? Everything went pretty smooth. Thanks for getting that money we had there. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the wineries. Oh, yeah, I, I can believe that. Um, but yeah, I think it's one of those ones that I actually mentioned before we first got here. Another thing to think about with credit cards, if you if we have first time travelers and thinking about things like TSA pre check or global entry, which helps get you through the lines. I actually just recently got a credit card which doesn't have any international fees on it. And I promise I don't work for the credit cards. But it also, it, what it, allowed me to do is I had to re-up my global entry and I didn't even, I looked and I was like, why do I have a credit on my account? It's because a lot of credit cards now that are associated with travel, they actually pay your global entry for you. So you go through the process, you go to the airport, you do your interview, make sure that you're good to fly. Um, and then what they do is the credit card, whatever it is, the $200 immediately gets refunded back to the card. So that's another side travel in or a travel tip uh, to think about anybody who's looking to do global entry for the first what time. What card is that? Yeah. Uh, sure. I mine is through a, a Capital One Venture card, but I would say if you, it's very common. I only know this because I am married to a very talented accountant who has <laughs> made sure I hate interest, um, and also is and anything we ever pay for, get points, get paid for it if you're going to pay for it. So she is very good on the credit card game. Um, and the reason I say that is. There are many that have that do that. I think if you just did a quick Google search on um, TSA pre check credit card, uh, you'll get a whole list of ones to choose from. Uh, if you have any sort of allegiance or certain airlines, a whole bunch of things. It's just becoming very popular. And at the end of the day, if you've ever traveled internationally and you get you get off the plane and you look and you're getting funneled to the line. And then there's the line with a hundred people in it. That's the normal one. And then there's the global entry one. And you just yeah. see people. And, and for years it was, I didn't have it. My wife did. And she's like, well, see you on the other side. And she would just zoom right past me. So um, if you can get it, get it. Especially if they're going to, especially if your credit card will pay for it for free. <clears throat> Think about sample hotels. I mentioned before, you know, these are four-star quality hotels. Um, we will, when, if anybody hasn't traveled before, because of course, GoHead is a very large company. So we have contracts with many, many, many hotel suppliers. And we do that on purpose to make sure we're prioritizing, keeping that quality where it is. But the point is you will actually receive your physical hotel assignments closer to departure. But the reason we give sample ones, is these are the type of hotels we've used in the past. Some people like to search them, Google them, see that they are four-star hotels uh, and just kind of know that, okay, they're doing what they said they're gonna do. Trip insurance. I'm also not an insurance salesperson. We offer optical trip insurance. Um, they're just talking about what it covers. The, the trip insurance covers 50,000 in medical. So that just means, God forbid, if anything happened when you were there, because well, I had realized when I first started working in travel, and I've got really good insurance through EF, but most times your insurance, once you leave the States, just becomes null and void. Um, so regardless of that, being the case or not, of course, it's just important to have some coverage when you're there. It also covers pre-existing conditions, which just means if there's anything where someone could deny coverage to you, we, we actually build a waiver in so they cannot deny coverage to you. Um, and of course, the normal things, if you hear the horror stories like, oh, the airlines lost my bag and I had to buy <laughs> new clothes, I had to do this. These are these things are covered in addition to, of course, the <laughs> From that whispering, I feel like someone's had a lost bag experience. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we'll see here. I saw that there's actually a list up here already. Thank you, Shelly, for looking for roommates. So rooming 
most of, I mean, our tours are based off double occupancy. So two people to a room, whether that's a couple, friends, however uh, you will be care yourself. That's why these wonderful lists up here exist. Uh, the tours do come with a couple, uh, I think we said four single rooms. So that means if you just do not have a roommate or you're very adamant that you want to travel by yourself, it is first come first serve, but we do have a couple of those available. Um, and this is the member price. Uh, so again, looking at with and without flights and single and double occupancy. And then if you are not a member and there are spaces left, it goes up a little bit, but nothing, nothing overly dramatic. Um, and same concept, double occupancy uh, with just those couple single rooms available. And of course, for thinking about numbers, if you are interested in enrolling, uh, there will be a process after this in terms of what day is it? Shall we get? Next Tuesday. Next, next Tuesday. That's right. So this is this is the sneak preview meeting here today, and for our for our friends on Zoom. Since yeah, price was different. But... So thinking about this too, also if you look inside, uh, you know we mentioned we all got those nice, very well put together brochures and packets. So you'll see in here, inside the individual tour uh, brochures, there is what's called a registration form. That is the version of that there. This is what, of course, the team will help you if you need, uh, if you have any questions regarding it, but this is what you're gonna be filling out uh, in order to put your deposit down to secure your spot. You see up in the corner, $250 in potential savings. That's split between two different discounts. Uh, no matter what, if you enroll for this trip, you will get you will start with $150 off. But then if you happen to be, I saw a couple hands go up who's traveled with us before. If you are a repeat traveler, you always start all go ahead trips with a hundred dollar credit to start with. So those are not pick and choose. You are able to combo them. Sorry, what was your question? No matter how long I go. Doesn't matter if you, okay. you traveled with us before. And also fun fact, EF's parent company or go ahead's parent company, EF. If you happen to be the parent and you ever send an EF student yeah. on an EF trip, yeah. we count you as a, a repeat traveler as well. Oh, oh, that's nice. Fun fact of the day. Not everybody knows that, mm -hmm. but that's why you got a tour consultant who used to work with student tours and now we're still helping out. So the inside fact. Um, we can talk about uh, Jelly. All you have to do is let Jelly know. Uh, okay. And it's just a very easy way to confirm. Mm -hmm. You mentioned before uh, automatic payment. All it costs to secure your spot is $99 down. Uh, and the nice thing about the automatic payment plan is it allows you to take a tour like this. And we saw the numbers. Like these are the reason we're rolling this out so far in advance is because we want to give people the ability to join. I don't know about everybody in the room, but like if somebody told me I had to pay in full for this trip, like I that would put me in the other bucket. I'd say, have fun. It's going to be a good time. Well, let me know how it is when you get back. But at the end of the day, the ability to put the 99 down allows us to make it into those monthly digestible payments, uh, which allows us to budget it and of course make it much more accessible. So the goal is to have as many people make memories as possible. Um, and it's one of the things that's included on your enrollment sheet, but if you want to do it, you can use uh, direct from checking. So you just need a routing and account number. A question on that one. Yes. You will, you will take also, a, uh, it has to be a check-in or a debit account. Correct. You can use a debit card associated with a bank. The only question that comes up is just sometimes with for the automatic payments, it has to be a checking account or a debit card. Whereas if you want, again, back to the concept of I want to earn my points, I don't have a credit card. What you can do is you can start with the automatic payment plan, put your 99 down. And then after that, you can switch over to a credit card if you want to do it. You're not, you don't have to be married to one versus the other. All right, now we got we got hands. I love it. Do you, do you have to do the automatic monthly payment? You don't have to. You have the ability to put a larger deposit down to do the to do the manual payment plan. Okay. Um, Eight so, ninety nine. Yep. So you have a choice with that one. Yeah. Okay. Say that again, Shelley. Eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine for a double or a single will be two thousand and forty nine because the insurance is a little bit more. We want to make sure you're probably using that Okay. Yep. The deposit going to be a little bit higher. Question. So if you split it into the monthly payments, like how many months? Uh, let's see. We are, you have to pay it off three months in advance. So we are a little over 12 months with that one. So if you paid it all at once. Yes. Like day one, yep. when you sign up, would there be like percentage off? 
That's a great question. I wish that was the case, but no, there, uh -huh. there, there is not one. Yeah. There. <laughs> but but it, but it is a good question. Do you pay with the credit card for that, or does it have to be check with No, you can pay with the credit card. So that's a good question. In terms of this, the, the real incentive from putting the 99 down is to access the payment plan, is to, is to break it into chunks. If you don't want to do the payment plan, which of course you don't have to, you have the ability to either, you don't have to, you, you can pay in full if that's something you're comfortable doing, or you can make chunk payments using the manual payment plan. It just has the larger deposit, which Shelly was referencing. So then you could use your credit card. Correct. Use the points. What a lot of people do is they start with the automatic payment plan. It's also the automatic payment plan gives you 60 days risk free. So what it does is it allows you to kind of put your toe in the water. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> the goal is to go. I think so. Um, if people know they're going to go, I wouldn't say it's quite as much of an incentive. Whereas if you're like, hey, I would love to go. I'm not quite sure how my summer is going to look. It gives you a little bit of extra flexibility. <laughs> Okay. We weren't aware of that, so we'll ha have some more discussion on that. That opens up a whole other door. Okay. That's, um, we really want to make a commitment, especially with our group, that it, it's a commitment that you are going, unless it's yes. health concerns Absolutely. or something like that. <laughs> we run into problems where people, this isn't cool, you can't bring it back, if you can say you don't let it go. <laughs> it, it's a commitment on our end when you're signing up for mm -hmm. But you mentioned the um, registration, if you want to do $8.99 down, at the beginning, and then a month prior to the deadline, we'll send out a letter. This is your final balance. After your discounts, after your rewards, mm -hmm. we'll give you um, that final number, and we'll ask you to pay that through the alley office. We collect oh, it, perfect. and then send it to that. And you wouldn't have known that. No, so no, I thought. Our slants is the, the other team member that yeah. works out in Denver with Josh. Um, Josh is actually filling in for um, Nicole and Carson coming here. But the, there's a different group that we work with there. He's a part of it, but um, Carson is one that we work with on, on that basis, yeah. So the 899 is for a double. Yeah. A single, you would have to do the 2004. Right. Now. Because you're insured higher, you're paying more, and insurance is rated at um, that okay. level of payment. That's and would you all- We want to make sure you're fully insured. Okay, so the, so yeah. you would have to pay that plus the excursions. Would you have to pay that? Yeah. We do collect for the excursion oh, upfront. Right. If you like to, you also have some time by final payment. We can do it too. We yeah. ask for upfront so that go ahead knows we've got a full trip and they know that to do their contracts, how many people they're going to have, right? Up. Correct. Because they have to have minimums for someone, so that way they but yep. still have some time. Well, I would say following up on the excursion question, that, that's another question that usually comes up. But in case anybody missed that is we had mentioned before some of the things like the glacier hike, those are considered optional excursions, which means if you don't opt to do them, it means you get that as free time of the day. But they do have an additional cost to them. But sometimes people ask, do I have to sign up for them the day of enrollment? And the answer is no. But it's one of the ones where we will communicate the fact that like there are certain deadlines for them to be signed up and it's for that exact reason because at the end of the day most excursions need at least 10 people on them to run and of course if five people sign up and then we can't run it of course you'd be refunded anything that you paid for it but it's one of the ones where it helps us collectively to know the more the earlier the better people are going to sign up for them um just because again it, it helps our vendors us plan with our vendors to make sure everything runs fluid. Yes. So if you sign up for the excursions, when you sign up for the trip, the money won't be due until the final payment. Well, it's right. built, it's put this way. If I sign up for the excursions, what it does is then it affects your overall balance. Your right. balance goes right. up blank. So it's kind of depending, it's one of the ones where it's not that you don't collect it until the very end. It just goes in however you're choosing. To okay. Yeah. Okay. Could you go back to the payment slide, please? Because I think the number on your slide and way different. is yeah, way different, different than what's in the whole. Oh, oh, I apologize if this wasn't updated correctly. Then I go off of what you see yes. in the in the update. So I okay, that's you know I went through it this morning, and I there's always something you're going to miss once. And I apologize about that. So yes, please use the updated information oh, on your yeah, this here. Different. Okay, and then the simple yeah, question is yeah. totally different. Uh, no, that's, that's a different that's story. Different. Simple. It's an example. Yeah, this is an example. 
So this is just, this is just more giving a visual picture of the registration or the registration. Mm -hmm. What was your second question? Uh, as far as insurance goes, there was one paragraph that said, if there's a health emergency at home, you may be Correct. able to, um, what are the parameters on that? So it's going to be like any insurance company. It's, I mean, like any insurance, there's, you file a claim. But I would say if your question is in regards to if there was a health emergency at home, it's not, I guess, what I'm saying is that it's not like there's some slippery slope where it's like, oh, here's the 50 things that actually don't count for it. From my experience, where things where people have filed insurance claims in the past, it's like, you know, if you were to have, if you were the caretaker for like a parent and they were to, you know, have an unseen, something like that, that's the point of insurance. So that is not, I, will, I don't want you worried that like, oh, if that happens, I'm not going to be able to file a claim to get, to get, uh, you know, get money back. Um, I think it's like I said, I'm not an insurance person. They, I, I have insured people in my family. I feel like you always have to watch the wording to a degree, but this is not designed to cause any fear. Um, if you had a family member who, you know, you needed to care for, that's something that should, I believe, fall underneath. Uh, uh, Check worthy. Category. Well, that's exactly the case. Yep. Because that's why I hesitate to plan something so far off. Mm -hmm. No, it's very fair. I think a lot of people have those concerns. And I think that is why the insurance is built into that in because it allows you, again, yes. if today is the day and you're like, if it was up to me, I'd, I'd jump right in and I'd, I'd love to do the trip. You have the peace of mind, shall we say, knowing that you have the ability, not to mention the fact that I feel like for other folks with the alley, or it's the beautiful part about having trips, multiple trips planned per year, is that in addition to the insurance, depending on spaces of availability, if something like that were to happen, there's always the ability to also look at a future trip if this specific day line doesn't work out for you. I'm also not an insurance agent, but I'd like to speak on behalf of this. We highly recommend you get insurance. Um, okay. And we like it paired with the travel company because of that saying what he just mentioned and also while well, on trip if you were be become ill or you need to get back let's say there's five people and four people have this insurance that we be partnered with and somebody else has a different insurance you may not be treated the same there's not anything i can do or a tour director or our staff or the tour director can do to help you in this situation we don't want to leave you stranded however we can only support what we have going on with this insurance. Mm -hmm. That may not, that may be kind of broad, but we had those things happen post pandemic with our with our travelers. So we want to make sure you're in the best hands. And we know from experience that this travel insurance is, um, we support that it, it doing this job. Is that, is that clear? Is that helpful? Does anybody have any questions, more questions about insurance? <clears throat> if you don't want to take insurance, you'll need to talk to your alley staff person and we'll, we'll take it from there. But we highly recommend taking these insurance. The uh, cancellation refund, it has to be tied to a good influence. So if you, correct, good question. So if you were to cancel, there are certain parameters, they say how far out you cancel, where you get some money back. The only real time where you wouldn't get any money back, and then you have to apply the voucher to a future tour, would be that you cancel within a week before departure. In times getting farther away than a, than a week out, then it's some portion of part of it is cash back to you. And then anything that would have been a cancellation fee is returned in the form of a voucher, which of course is designed to incentivize you to travel again in the future. Any other questions for the back? I feel left up here. Oh, it's okay if you got one up here, but I just want to make sure all, all voices are heard. So I've got a question. There was volcanic activity. Are we going to get anywhere close to that? Well, the realistic, the question in the back is, there's volcanic activity already close to it. You are always kind of close to it for the fact that you are, like, Iceland is a volcano. And but there were some lava flows. What, where was that? I flew uh, down. The well, they yes, the the ones that are not part of the tour is that everyone was watching the news back in uh, kind of before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Oh, even now. And there was yeah, well, it's oh. continuous. And mm -hmm. I know this from interesting experience. I, I referenced there are a lot of interesting analogies between Iceland and Hawaii. And I visited the Big Island in Hawaii back in 2017. And the Airbnb I actually stayed at, I somehow followed up, was able to research it. 
had to be rebuilt because when the big volcano volcano hit this the the big island, it was on a lava field and it took that house out. Um, so point is here, this specific trip is not going to that southern part of the peninsula uh, where those volcanic activities are. Of course, like your safety is our number one concern. So I don't think it would make a lot of sense to bring it right next to us. But no, it's a good question. But if it were major, would would the trip be canceled? Well, that's I mean, because right, did, didn't we hear that like European trips were canceled when Iceland erupted? Many years back. Well, there have been. So there, I, I think what you're referencing is there was, I think in the early 2019 or 2012, 2013, mm -hmm. there was the, yeah, the original Icelandic eruption. Mm -hmm. And what it was causing is there actually between the United States and Europe, there was so much essentially like air pollution mm -hmm. that it wasn't viewed safe to safe to fly. And the way I view it, and for people that have never traveled with EF before, EF's been traveling and bringing students and adults across for 55 years. So what we say about that is like all of the, and even with, I've been with EF all through COVID, um, whatever the world has thrown at us, we've found ways to navigate it and of course like prioritize the safety of our travelers. Um, so I guess to answer your question, of course, if something was deemed like, you know, a reason to, to not bring due to safety, we of course would never take you there, um, but we're constantly, we have a whole, Dedicated team who literally just monitor world events and keep track of safety in that area. Yes. Could you also revisit the global entry concept? I'm not sure. sure so global entry is just there's, I think domestically most folks have heard of the TSA pre-check. There's a separate line at the airport. So global yeah. entry is kind of like TSA pre-check for international flights. Mm -hmm. So what it does is you the process is you go. You have to schedule an appointment. This is not through us, this is like through TSA. Um, so what you do is you schedule an appointment, you go, you do an interview. I think what they're essentially doing is like making sure you are who you say you are. And like that, you're, yeah, being a background check, exactly. Um, and when you're cleared, you get a TSA pre-check card or you get a global entry card, which doubles also as domestic pre-check. So you qualify for both. So if you ever had like on your ticket, it just has a little check on it. But what it allows you to do when you are re-entering is essentially like a fast pass because you've already cleared certain security through your interview and background check. So it allows you just to get through the re-entry process back to the United States a little faster. When did that start? I don't know the, the year it started, but I think it's been around for at least the last like 10, 15 years, oh, I think. At least. Yeah. 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 And how do you sign up for this? So actually, let me intercept uh, sure. here. You will have an um, on staff escort with you the whole time. It's not required that you get these passes to go through. We don't have it. We are the last ones to make sure our phone group is through. Yeah. This is something that you could do on your own after if you do another travel or if you want to do it as travel. But um, we do have somebody coming tomorrow from the state of Michigan who will talk about the real ID, the requirement for domestic travel on flights that will take place next year. But he will also talk about other enhanced um, licenses, whether it's going to Canada or these full mm -hmm. Yes. So um, if we wanted to do this, Shelly, would does MV, last time? I tried to do TSA. It had to be in Detroit that you made your appointment. You couldn't get it through MBS. Did you know what MBS? I'm pretty sure it's still Detroit or Fort Huron. Yeah. There's a class in Sag and all the folks inside and all. I wasn't aware of that one. Yeah. yeah. That's it's, something we'll have to bring up for discussion. Yeah. Because I don't have to. So, yeah. Let's ask John tomorrow. That's awesome. Any other questions? Sorry. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Worth a while. Oh. Okay, so if I travel into Hawaii, the Canadian Rockies, and Yellowstone, all in one trip, right? It really is. It really, it really is. really is. And I like your, your um, suggestions on apparel, hiking shoes, definitely, because you're hiking a lot. Up, 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 volcanoes, um, in the Kaiba fields, everywhere. And it's cold, generally, in July. Yeah. Right um, here, for the... Um, Waterfall soup, right? Yes, it's not as cold. I mean, it's not like you're not going to be dealing with snow or anything like that. It's just in terms of like the overall temperature, it's not going to be you know, humid. Let me actually, I can tell you, give me one second because the nice thing too is we have the ability to 
a little bit cooler. We had jackets. <clears throat> um, the whale watching <clears throat> event was Great. the most favorite. In fact, we're going to have a drawing. Okay. Somebody in this room will win that excursion today. But they actually give you rain gear or water um, gear on. It's like a a zoom suit mm -hmm. for that. Fifties, mid fifties to uh, low seventies. So very comfortable, um, but definitely not. Uh, not not the humidity and sweltering and okay. heat of July and, and, and mid Michigan. Okay. Yeah. Yes. How much hiking yeah. at one time would you say? Like not three hours at one time? No, no. That three hours is about the overall activity of the day for when you're on your feet. I would say there's no no specific event minus if you do the excursion that's the uh the so glacier hike. Yeah. That is probably going to be the most strenuous activity in terms of hiking. But at any given time, half an hour to an hour max. And that's like seven months. So definitely much more. And again, not a, with a group. So you're never going to be like on your own doing it. And not it's not a race at the top of the mountain or anything. It's very much like at your own pace, slow, comfortable. Um, and even like a lot of the places like the uh, geyser I was, re I was referencing, there's even, um, they're made of rope, but it's kind of like guide rails, uh, just so people need them for extra support. And what elevation are we? I mean, I know it's going to change because we move around the it, whole island, well, it, but... The thing is, because it's an island, it's you're never really that far above sea level because you are so close to the ocean. So um, there, I don't have off the top of my head the, like, the highest elevations, but, because, but what we're doing as a group on this trip is not going to be... Um, like no one's driving you way up a mountain and having you go up there where you have to worry about elevation. And you from Colorado can, I mean, you're used to elevation, but we're not. No, but I was with all of my in-laws and like my mother-in-law, mm -hmm. but it was split time between Ohio and, oh, um, and all of them. So no, we were, we were, um, all good. Yes, we were good. Okay. What, what did the flights look like from the Detroit lakes? Um, An example. In terms of like potential let's lakes, uh, well, the good thing is, I'm trying to think, when we, I guess I did mine from Colorado, but our, I want to say, actually, let me just double check, because I don't want to give, uh, wrong, I don't want to give. Say they were 90 hours ish. Yeah, and, you, yeah, and that, like, including the layover, if there was one. Yeah, I think including the layover, you're looking at 9 to 10 hours, potentially. Um, if, like, if you get the East Coast to... Reykjavik flight, it's not that bad because it's, I mean, you're not even, it's not even the same as going to, put this way, New York to, to London is closer than New York to LA, and Iceland is basically about halfway through, so it's it's not a, not a bad flight at all. Yes? Last time we traveled with you guys, Shelly brings up a sort of point. Um, you routed us home through Dallas. Essentially turning a seven hour flight into a 16 hour flight. Yeah, I mean, I, Ireland to Dallas adds nine hours to what should be seven hour flight. I will sit here and make up. What was last year's? Yeah. Well, that also gives a little bit of context. I think, I, I, I guess I'm careful with my answer because I don't want to ever stand up here and make it seem like I'm making excuses for flights. Um, I also will make the separation that like the airlines to a degree, I mean, they, they set those routes. But I would say this, when you do flights the through go ahead, the intention of the flights team is trying to mitigate examples like that. I'm not going to sit here and say that clearly you're an example that it does occasionally happen, but we do the things that are in our power to try to make sure those type of reroutings don't happen. And but I, but again, like I said, I would be lying, of course, if I said, of course, I don't always know how they do. Um, I wish we had infinite power to dictate. This is like, nope, we're doing the shortest route possible. We do know that that is, um, that is always still the goal of the flight team. Could you talk on upgrades? Yeah. Sure. Um, so thinking about the question was about flight upgrades. So of course, pricing that you saw on the, or see on the slide or see in your information are based off of normal economy flights. But once we get closer to departure, 
if it's something you're like would like to request, you have the ability to reach out and request business class seats. They are based on requests, so it's not one of the ones are traditionally we are able to get those requests and upgrade net. But again, mentioned before, there's a dance that travel companies do with the airlines. A good thing with Go Ahead is we have the second largest contract in the country behind the military with the major airlines. Wow. Um, last summer, people are like, well, can you leverage that a little better? Uh, I'm not going to make any excuses that last summer was an interesting time to fly personally and with the company. Um, we have seen this past year, because you have to remember, think about last summer, we called it, it was essentially the peak of what was called revenge travel. Mm -hmm. We all know that we were cooped up way too long. Mm -hmm. There was a tremendous amount of demand. And from my vantage point, the airlines, hotel industry, like 2022, they were really just fine. Like they were relearning to walk again. Um, and last year was when they were really probably trying to do full capacity. And lack of a better term, there was a learning curve that happened, um, all sides, all sides included. Um, but I do feel like this, the past six months, we've seen the number of, I'll call them escalated cases. We've seen, <laughs> we've seen them dramatically increase, which I choose to interpret as everybody's kind of like getting back to the new, uh, the demand is gone down a little bit. It's still very high, but at the end of the day, the people whose job it is to provide those services are, I think, whether the airlines are just in a better place, whatever it is, I'm just happy to see we don't have quite as many phone calls coming in for folks who are understandably confused and a little frustrated about what happened. Maybe this is for Shelly. Is there a way to sign up for the, you want an upgrade on the seating, like at, when you were registered? For on our registration form. Yeah. It is on the registration form. Yep. And there's, then Shelly mentioned Carson. So the way it works is you can register, you can indicate interest now, and then once that kind of window opens, we proactively communicate to you because you can say it today and then, you know, six months from now, you're like, yeah, no, it's fine. I'll do their normal season. Or, or how much it's going to cost. Exactly, because it's about a request and, <laughs> and wanting to understand those things. So yeah. definitely, I recommend that if you are interested in potential upgrades, mm -hmm. that you go and you, um, that you indicate that on your registration box and then just understand that we'll, there will be proactive communication to you regarding um, what those options will look like. Okay, and so if you want to know more about Iceland, don't forget to sign up for the overview with Patrick Cooney, and that is on Thursday from 9 to 1030. They'll be talking about the geography in that region. It's very important, especially if you plan to travel to Iceland, or even if you're not, it's very informative and you'll enjoy the program. Also, the Audi Extra. Remember, we pay to enhance your travel experience by adding additional classes.